this sermon is about our viewpoint. And we didn't read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The scripture today is Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read from 9 to 13. I'll read verse 9, you read 10, and we'll go back and forth and read the last verse together. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God the Lord of dry land was, and the Lord has been brought hither together, he was this. And I saw that he was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. Sanchudong is one mountain, Hyangnobong, and that's 300 meters high. Hyangnobong. Yes, Hyangnobong. <laughs> and from Hyangnobong, you get a good view of Donggu and Chosun University, and you can see even into downtown Kwangju. But behind Hyangnobong is Mudungsan, which is 1,100 meters high. And at Mudungsang, you see the same area, but it's just from a higher perspective. So as, uh, as we look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, what perspective are we taking? And I want to give three of, of where we are at with this verse. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 and God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. After this, and it was so, at Genesis 1-9, we find three things. There's a sea, and then there's the land, and then there's the beach between them. The first perspective we take at Genesis 1-9 is standing on the beach. See, if we would stand on this first beach, looking out across the sea, there are three things that we see. First, there is the ocean before us. And this ocean is a journey. Next, there is the land after the ocean. This far land that we look to. And that is a home. But the third thing we see is the beach itself. And its vastness. And as we walk... If we could, mile upon mile, with this border, the vastness of the ocean on one side, and the vastness of the land on the other side, we might ask, why is the beach, this border, so vast? Why is the beach, beach so long? But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, that's not the right question. <coughs> the right question, Genesis 1, 9, and God said. 
Genesis 1-9 is not really about the beach, the sea, or the land. It is about God who made them. And who is God to make the beach and the sea and the land? And who is God that makes these, this, this area so vast? So if we stop right here on the beach to get the first perspective, the second perspective of the beach is our conquest of it. The next high view that we take, and perhaps we have all seen this view of the beach, it's a jet going into an airport. It's a jet leaving an airport. We have conquered the oceans. We have conquered the lands. Uh, ocean and land, they no longer meet at the beach. They, they meet at airport gates called A32 with jets on concrete runways. And these ocean barriers have been conquered. The lands that we travel to are just eight hours on a plane. And the view that we have of this beach, from the jet going down, and we barely see the beach anymore. Water just turns to land. And land is just a weary airport terminal we arrive at. But if I've been talking about the viewpoint we take of the beach and we've started at the land on the beach and then we're a little bit higher in our conquest of the beach and the jets going above. This third view as if we were climbing higher and higher because we are trying to answer this question, why is the beach so vast? And who is God who made the sea so vast? And if we should go to this third view ever higher, what is the purpose of the beach? And so we find ourselves again on the beach and we are surveying three homes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 7. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. On the beach, there is this home above us. There's God's home that is above us. And then, to our left and our right, are two homes. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that he gathered together he called the seas. See, at the beach we have the sky above us. And we have the sea to our right, and the land to our left. And each of these homes displays a measureless and diverse upheaval showing their own unique characteristics. Phobos may orbit Mars, 
Io may orbit Jupiter, but the heavens have their own glory. The, the triggerfish and the seahorse may live in the coral reefs, and they are at home in the sea. But on our land, the butterfly and the hummingbird make their home in the trees of the land. See, at this meeting point of three homes, one above, and the sea to the right, and the land to the left, we meet God's diverse glory. Um, and they meet, two of these glories meet, with each crashing wave that falls from the ocean onto the land. Um, at God's order, all these waves are gathered. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear, and it was so. We see that God's order and God's diversity are like his right and left hand. God's right hand extends his order, for he is the one who commands the waves to stop. And God's left hand extends his diversity. <clears throat> so on this third day, when God, when we survey this divide, that God has ordained. Genesis chapter 1 verse 10, God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called the seas, and God saw that they were good. We see the goodness in God's order. And we see the glory of God's diversity. At the waves of the sea are the ordering of God's power. And this ordering of God's power between land and sea allow God to display the diversity of his power in each realm. Jeremiah 5.22, Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence, who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass beyond it? And though its waves toss to and fro, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. Job 38, verse 8. For who is shut the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, This far you may come, but no farther. Here your proud waves must stop. So, so if we stop for a moment and we cease looking at the heavens above us and now we find ourselves surveying this divide that God has made between land and sea, 
God's ordering protects the land from the sea. Mm -hmm. It is God's ordering that protects the sea from the land. Genesis 1.10, God called the dry land earth. At this ordering of sea and land, we might ask, does my life need God's order? If God commands the waves obey him, does God command my obedience as well? If the waves command obey God's command, does God have the right to ours? And the next question we might ask at the beach, because we meet God who orders the waves. God at the beach has concealed so many new things. Because at the beach I could look above and see the dome of the sky. But there is so much that is new there that I have not seen. I have not seen Ganymede or Io or Nebula. There is so much that is new that is beyond my vision. I have not gone to the deep places of the ocean and seen God's new secrets, God's concealed glory. In each home, there is a diversity of newness. At the beach, God gives birth to discovery. Columbus and Magellan, the explorers of old, have the spirit to explore, the inquisitiveness to seek what is new. And each realm around us, in the heavens, the sea, and the land, has their new glory, which God has concealed. Am I seeking something new? Because God makes all things new. Revelation 25. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <coughs> so with these two questions, because there is so much that is new that we have never seen in each realm, we come to God who makes all things new. Where we see the waves obeying God's order, we come to God who gives order. But, but now we must leave the beach and go to our home, the land. The land is what God has given to us. The land is our home, yet the land is God's land. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed. The first work that God did with the land... God made the land beautiful. On the beach, we see the boundary of the waves. This is God's order. 
but above the grass we see this tapestry. This is beauty. Ha have you seen a picture of the moon? It's covered in rocks. Have you seen a picture of Mars? It's just rocks. Have you seen the surface of the sun? It is just flames. But uniquely, our own world, what God accepts, he makes beautiful. Women are uniquely decorated with long hair. Men are uniquely decorated with our beards. <laughs> <laughs> but the earth is uniquely decorated is unique the grass is God's first ornament on earth's dry and dusty surface The surface of the earth is beautiful because God is beautiful. God is the reflection of all beauty. Or to make that clearer, the reflection of all beauty is God. He is the source. God is the reflection of all beauty. He is the hope of true beauty. The grass is God's declaration that what he creates is not useful, but it is beautiful. Psalm 34, verse 5, they looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Psalm 90, verse 7, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Psalm 33, verse 1, Rejoice, O Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and inquire of him at his temple. So, so if we have these three viewpoints, at the beach we remember God's ordering, dividing the sea from the land. On the grass we remember God's beauty, what God accepts he honors. And what he honors, he makes beautiful. And the last viewpoint we have is under the tree. <coughs> Some grass can sprout in seven days. The apple tree grows to maturity in seven years. Genesis 1.11 Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind. The earth and... and uh, 
Um, then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with their seed in it. And it was so. Um, God gives grass to beautify the land's surface. God gives trees to steward the land's time. Oh, see, faith in perceiving God's ordering of all things yields to his ordering of our lives. Faith, finding God's order on the beach and God's beauty on the grass and God's patience under the tree because God waits for the tree to bear fruit. We find last God's patience on the third day of creation. Um, Genesis 1.12 The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, trees of every kind bearing fruit with their seed in it. And God saw that it was good. See, the title of this sermon, And It Was So. At God's command, Genesis 1-7, for the sky. And it was so. At God's command, Genesis 1, 9, for the sea, and it was so. At God's command for the grass and the trees, Genesis 1, 11, and it was so. If we have seen the wisdom of God's ordering of the sea, the beauty of God's covering the land with grass, and the patience of God's order waiting for the fruit from each tree, faith places us back on the beach where we started. Because God made this beach the third day. He put an ocean before us to remind us of a journey. He put a far land beyond us that we would seek a greater home. And now we all must wait on the beach with these three homes, God's home above us, the sea, a journey before us, and this far land that we look ahead to, this new land where God says, I make all things new. Faith, faith stands on the beach looking for God's new land. Faith walks on the grass waiting for God's beauty. Faith stands under every growing tree 
trusting God's patience. Faith is not our work to God, but faith permits God's work for us and God's work in us. If the seed does not protest God's order and the grass does not protest God's beauty, <coughs> faith seeks for God's beauty. Faith fears for God's order. And faith calls upon God's goodness. Psalm 33, verse 7. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So if God protects and beautifies and gives order to the land, how much more does he do so with us? If God protects the land's uniqueness, and beautifies the land's surface, and stewards the land's time, how much more does he do, do with each of us? Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. Amen. And all we are the work of your hand. Jeremiah 18.6 O house of Israel, can I not do with you as with this potter, says the Lord? Look, as clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So as God creates the land and the sea, and the plants, so by faith God creates each of us. In Christ we are a new creation. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 8 and 9. The one who plants and the one who waters are one, and each will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's fellow worker. You are God's field. And all that God does for the land, he calls each of us to do the same for each of us. May God's grace find <clears throat> us. May by faith, we find the good hand of our Lord, who is our potter. And as God made the earth, may God make each of our lives by faith. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your good creation. Move our hearts to turn to you and help us to grow in our faith. Help us to know you. We thank you for this day and for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.